And, and thank you to your organisation so far, who have been a great support in every Assembly meeting so far. So if I can now move on to an Irish perspective from Detective Chief Superintendent Seamus Boland, who is with the National Drugs and Organised uh, National Drugs and Organised Crime Sorry. Unit. Uh, thank you. Very welcome, Seamus. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, ladies and, and gentlemen. As a police officer of 34 years service, 26 years of which has been dedicated to working in, in the field of drugs investigations uh, at local community level and, and now at national and international level, it's, I'm absolutely delighted to be invited here uh, to address the Citizens' Assembly and I wish to acknowledge the importance of the work that you're actually doing. I, I'm in such a rush to try and keep the chair happy. I had a false start there a couple of minutes ago, so, so I do apologise for that. <laughs> and, and please bear with me, but I'm likely to be issued with a speed talking ticket at the end of this because there's a lot of information that, that I actually need to cover. So, so I'm going to try and talk about the national perspective in relation to law enforcement, but I also want to talk to you about, uh, you know, what, what do the, the drug trafficking gangs think, think of this? You know, what are they planning? And also I'll try and finish up with, with at least a, a little bit of good news that, you know, we actually as a nation are doing some very, very good work, and I'll just briefly, briefly highlight that. So in 2015, it was recognised by Garda management that there was a necessity for policing to, to recalibrate and restructure at a national level to deal with the evolving organised crime environment. Garda National Drugs and Organised Crime Bureau was established with the remit to disrupt, dismantle and prosecute organised crime networks involved in serious criminal activity at national level. And this was focusing on the groups that are involved in drug trafficking, firearms offences, violence and intimidation and including murder and also the, the, the associated money laundering. Network disruption was acknowledged as the best method to target drug trafficking networks. The decision makers, the facilitators, supply routes, wholesalers, enforcers and money launderers, they're the focus of our uh, long-term and resilient intelligence-led targeted investigations. These are our high-value targets. Identified criminal organisations that are well-established and structured and linked to the global network of the drug trade, they're our long-term focused uh, targets. We conduct our duties via intelligence-led uh, policing operations, all of which involve various degrees of national and international collaboration. And I can tell you that at present, uh, we're currently involved in 20 national priority operations targeting identified criminal networks, all of which have international nexus of various degrees, all of which are involved in significant drug trafficking. Our national situation is directly linked to the EU and global situation. Ireland's illicit drug trade does not stand in isolation and it cannot be tackled in isolation. What happens globally impacts on Ireland and vice versa can also be the case. Irish criminals are operating uh, uh, in the drug trade all across Europe, uh, Central and South America, Asia and the Middle East, and our citizens have been responsible for the supply of cocaine as far away as Australia and New Zealand. Criminal networks create underground economies and they cause economic dependency. They undermine local communities and perpetuate the presence of criminal structures. We now constantly refer to criminal networks because cooperation between groups nationally and internationally is fluid, systemic, and it's always profit-oriented. It's all about the money. In 2015, Transcrime, the joint research centre on innovation and cr on crime based in Milan in Italy, was commissioned by the EU Commission to draft a report to assist in understanding the market value of certain illegal markets, including illicit drug trafficking. And Garda Shikhan and the Criminal Assets Bureau assisted in this project and the report made a number of findings relative to Ireland. Uh, Ireland was recognised at the time as not only a destination country but also a strategic transit country for illicit drugs destined for the UK and EU market. The other stats uh, and the report there are available for you to read and, and I'm just going to skip over them. Since the report is based in 2011 data, I think though it's fair enough to say uh, it's going to be fairly behind the time in relation to the, to the estimates that were generated and, and we're going to be in a, in a, in a much worse state uh, at, at this stage. These are vast sums of money and these are the sums of money that fuel Irish drug trafficking networks, cash generated from illicit drugs consumption. In the course of our own domestic investigations, we've established yearly turnovers of between 10 million and 24 million for certain uh, Irish groups. This is cash generated in Ireland, again from the sale of illicit drugs. Drugs sold and consumed on the streets, pubs and clubs all over Ireland. This is the cash handed over in every county that makes its way back to the facilitators who count it, log it, vacuum pack it 
and arrange it either to be laundered in Ireland or more often taken out of the country to enter into the global money laundering mechanisms. This cash also pays for all the facilitators in the supply chain, including the enforcers who commit the violent acts on behalf of the networks. We've seized records of expenses due to facilitators for services provided. It's all connected, consumption being the key to the economics of supply and demand in the drug trade. The UN ODC World Drug Report 2023, which I'm, I'm sure you'll read, highlights the adapting and evolving world of drug trafficking. In particular, the increase in synthetic drugs, cheap and easy synthetics that are currently changing drug markets with lethal results. The report highlights the continued record illicit drug supply and increasingly agile drug trafficking networks that are compounding intersecting global crises and challenging health services and law enforcement responses. The report identifies that public health, prevention and access to treatment services must be prioritised worldwide or drug challenges will leave more people behind. In relation to law enforcement's efforts, it underscores the need for a law enforcement response to keep pace with agile criminal business models and the proliferation of cheap synthetic drugs that are easy to bring to market. Drug traffickers and cartels are well uh, um, ready and prepared for all eventualities that will arise. Criminal organisations have no intention of allowing their profits decrease and are continuously making and adjusting plans to increase consumption and ensure profit increase. We continuously see the new products that are coming to the market, products like cannabis edibles, vapes, we even see nitrous oxide uh, now being sold. These are ones that have particularly come to mind. All of which created and aimed at a younger generation with the intention of increasing customer base. It's the business model and creating the next generation of consumers. We are satisfied that Irish criminal networks have been considering the supply of fentanyl into the Irish market. This is a very concerning development as fentanyl is not just significant, as you know, to opioid users, but it's a risk to all drugs consumers as cartels can add fentanyl to other drugs to increase addiction, thereby increasing customer base, leading to greater profits. And drug debts, fentanyl in the US, as we know, in 2022, were 109,000, uh, where the preliminary stats released. Just over a minute, James. In 2019, Irish criminal groups also discussed the move to legislation of cannabis in certain jurisdictions and the potential for increased numbers of countries to follow this route. They planned to invest 30 million euro into the global illegal cannabis, global, sorry, legal cannabis industry. These plans involved complicated money laundering structures where the money would eventually be invested into the industry via corrupt, complicit business people. The intention of the criminal organisation was to ensure they continue to generate their vast incomes even in situations where cannabis would become legal. They have formulated plans to ensure the illegal industry will be maintained irrespective of, of any legalisation. The strategy of criminal organisations is all about increasing profit and you increase profit by increasing customer base and consumption where the consumption involves legal or illegal. The supply of legal cannabis has now become an issue for us in law enforcement. Canada and the US have now become source countries where product legally purchased in those states is illegally ported into Ireland and other jurisdictions for sale by criminal organisations. I should finish up, Shane. This is please. the knock-on effect that happens when states in isolation in their efforts to tackle what is a cross-border global issue. Ireland certainly doesn't want to wish to become a source country for, for you know, any other countries. And I finish just briefly. Uh, you know, there are certain things, it's not all good news, but, but you know, stats relative to operations and seizures at national level. Uh, you know, the 29 million in cash that has been seized by, by, by Gardaí, uh, you know, that's the cash that's taken out of the, of the drugs networks. But also, you know, as reported in our media, and you'll have seen all these articles, we currently have uh, one of our lowest uh, organised crime related murder rates that we've had in my whole career of 34 years. Thankfully, we've had none so far this year. Thanks, we've gone James. from 29 in 2010 to five last year and one the year before. Thanks, James. And, and, we'll have to and finish up. The Global Peace Index, if you haven't read it and you haven't heard of it, please download it and look at it. Okay. In 2012, we were number 12, Thank we're you, now Seamus. number three. Time Thank up. you, Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.